You know, for me, milkweeds have been special because they've just been easy for me to study. They have lots of genetic variation. There's lots of floral variation. They have some very interesting interactions in nature, not only with insects, but with other plant species and especially other species of milkweed. So for me, there's a lot of questions that can be addressed. Now, the genus as a whole has some pretty peculiar biochemical and reproductive aspects that are unique. So for example, we all know that milkweeds have this milky latex. The latex is an anti-herbivore phenomena and the latex has some very strong molecules in it called cardiac glycosides or cardenolides. And many insects such as the monarch butterfly and tussock moths and other insects have learned to overcome these toxins and they're specialists on milkweeds. So there is that unique natural history coevolutionary aspect of milkweeds that makes them rather fun to study. But there's also the aspect of pollination biology. Now, there are a lot of instances where it's useful for humans to hand pollinate milkweeds. And this really is a test of endurance and the ability to have stable hands because you're working in a very tiny space. And in fact, I've had uh, students who have tried pollinating milkweeds and commented on how helpful it is for them to learn how to work in a small space. My name is Lainey Jensen. I go to SUNY Cortland, and my major is, well, I have two majors, biology and mathematics. I became involved working with milkweed my freshman year. I begged Dr. Broyles to do research with him, and he found a position for me in the summer, and I started working in the greenhouse. I've been pollinating milkweeds for about a year and a half now, on and off. Uh, I do enjoy pollinating milkweeds. It's rewarding and uh, it's kind of relaxing just doing it over and over again. Okay, so how you pollinate is you first take out the pollinarium with your dissecting needle and then you unzip the stigmatic chamber with the dissecting needle very gently so you don't rip the flower and then you try to get it into the stigmatic chamber with the convex side facing inward. Light can be an issue just because it's, it can be hard to see what you're doing. Like on cloudy days, we used to not pollinate before we got the LEDs. I would say that my skills in pollinating milkweed have been useful in other areas of my biology career. Um, having steady hands is useful when you're doing dissections like in our other intro bio class where you have to dissect a pig. I think patience, this has taught me a lot of patience and you have to use that in other classes too. That's it, right? But here's how it happens. I usually remove the pollen area from a suitable flower with a very sharp dissecting needle. I'll let it rest on my thumbnail where I break the corpusculum in half and shortly after doing that I will take the dissecting needle and open up the top flaps of the stigmatic chamber. Then I can go back with the dissecting needle using a small drop of nectar, pick up the plenium on the tip of the dissecting needle and transfer it to the stigmatic chamber. Once that's in the stigmatic chamber and the concave surface is facing inward, I can fold the stigmatic chamber back together and allow the pollination to result in pollen germination. Each species of milkweed, the plenium is matched to the size of the ovary. 
So for example, the common milkweed that we have throughout central New York, the number of pollen grains in a plenium is a little bit more than 400. How many ovules are there in an ovary? There's approximately 300. So there's always a few extra pollen grains being transported to a flower to make sure that there's enough to fertilize all the eggs and the ovules. Well, milkweeds are a very charismatic group. They're a lot like the monarch butterflies. And everyone loves a beautiful black and orange butterfly that migrates long distances. And their sole food plant as a caterpillar is the genus Asclepius. So that's one way that someone else should be interested in the genus Asclepius. But there are other ways. Uh, beekeepers should be interested. Milkweeds produce lots of nectar and they attract a wide array of insects, honeybees among them, that will take nectar and make honey out of it. All right. Naturalists will love milkweeds because of the unique natural history they have with a whole community of organisms, from caterpillars and beetles to butterflies and bees.